Hi, I'm Hilary Sterling, the executive chef and partner at Vic's Restaurant here in New York City. And today, I'm going to show you how to shape every pasta. So today, we're going to go through all the different areas and some different doughs. Traditional linguine to tagliatelle to bucatini to some of the lesser knowns as stracciatati and orchette. The Italians have been the authority on pasta making forever. Every pasta shape is designed for a sauce so that it captures whatever sauce that is given for it and actually was created for it. The Italians do it the best. Here are the tools to make and shape pasta. In order to get our pasta where we need it to be, we always need a pasta roller. One that is easy to use, hand crank, perfect for all sorts of pasta that you can make. If you do not have the patience for a hand crank, we have an electric version. If we don't want to sheet our doughs, the next thing we can always use is a pasta extruder. There's almost 1,200 different shapes of pasta. 300 different kinds of them come from an extruded version. So this is a different dough. This is your semolina and water, as opposed to more of an egg-based process where you use your hand crank. If we are looking for more of a spaghetti, our guitar right here, guitar strings, to cut through a beautiful pasta shape. In order to push your spaghetti through these beautiful tight strings, we need a rolling pin. It's the only other tool that's essential in making pasta. One of my favorite tools in the kitchen. One of my second favorite tools in the kitchen, bench scraper. This picks up your pasta, this keeps your flour in order, it cuts the dough and you can shape things. So this is also one of those things I can't live without. One of my other favorite ones is a beautiful cookie cutter. We use them to cut forzetti, raviolis, anything else we need to start in a round shape form. If we are cutting squares or rectangles to start, like our farfalle, we are using a uh, pasta cutter. One of my other favorite tools is a gnocchi board. We can make garganelli, gnocchi, cavatelli, melaredes. This is a different shape version of a uh, gnocchi board. Some of my last favorite tools, I can't live without a ruler. We have so many different shapes that we can make and that we need this 12 inch ruler to help us guide the way. I like to use a pencil for many things for note taking, scribbles, writing recipes on the wall and making garganelli the old fashioned way. My last two tools that I need, a short knife to cut with, and then last but not least, the scale. Pasta in itself is an art, but it's also a science. Without a scale, our doughs can go right or wrong. All right, let's get to shaping pasta. This is a corsetti. We're gonna start off with a really, really wonderful shape, very easy to make, called corsetti. And the corsetti stems from a traditional uh, circle shape coin pasta that usually has the family's crest on it so that you could tell when you were buying corsetti at the local market that you knew who made it. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna use a rolling pin and just kind of get this flat enough to go through a pasta roller or sheeter. So always when we're starting with a roller is we go uh, as the widest possible. You never want to try to squeeze anything through. And then we're going to let it run a couple of times. We're going to get it to essentially not paper thin for this pasta, but just before that so it still has some texture and some bite to it. Always have a little flour on your board and the pasta so that it doesn't stick the roller. Once you get pasta stuck in here, there's really no going back, unfortunately. So now we have a nice shape here. So a uh, circle cutter, I'm using a uh, old fashioned cookie cutter, biscuit cutter. I don't have a family crest. So I like to use a gnocchi board or a cavatelli maker to kind of emulate uh, ridges, texture, and then I take them on a board, use the palm of my hand, and then slowly peel them off. It's a very delicate pasta, so it's really important that the sauce that goes with it is light and elegant. It is a beautiful canvas. It's a plate. It's really wonderful. And I love the history of it. A family crest. Like, I think we should bring that back around. I'd like to create one right now. And that's the corsetti. This is a farfalle. So when we're cutting out these kind of shapes, I like to use a ruler, because honestly, it's the only way to do it, because we're cutting out a perfect square. So right now, I'm gonna take our dough and just kind of square off to make this easier to work with. I'm gonna cut this right down the center. For the farfalle, it is a one and a half inch by one and a half inch. So I'm just gonna make little ridges here along the way. And then we're gonna cut them all the way down with our trusty ridge cutter. 
we're gonna put those nice ridges on the edge. And then I'm gonna do one more time, get that ruler out, one and a half, and then one and a half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna turn them into butterflies. So all we have to do is cinch them up and pinch them together, and then we have our butterflies. And that's the farfalle. This is pizzocchieri. This is a buckwheat dough from the north of Italy. In Lombardia, right on the border of Switzerland, there's a small town called Datalina where this is one of the uh, most well-known dishes that comes from it. So this pasta is made with 80% buckwheat flour mixed with a traditional double zero. Pizzo is uh, Latin from pita, and pizzo caro means poor or ugly or bad or gray. So this is not the prettiest of the doughs, but it's also one of the most flavorful. The buckwheat adds a really lovely texture. So I'm gonna square these off. Pizzo carry can be the, either a long, thin, or wide and short. The dish is, is made with cabbage and potatoes, so I prefer to make them shorter. So I'm gonna make these into wide shapes. That's one example of the pizzo carry. And then they also make them into ridged versions as well. This dish is served with a, a specific cheese that's also from the Alps called Vito, and it's uh, really one of those hearty winter dishes that I really do cherish and love. And that's Pizzo Carry. This is Taharin. So our next pasta shape comes from the north in Piemonte called Taharin. And this is a very traditional shape and really easy to make. We're gonna make sure that there's a little bit of flour on top of each roll, because we're gonna roll this up. This pasta literally translates to, to cut. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna cut ribbons, pick them up. Traditionally served with a meat ragu, it's so rich and silky. That's why this one's pretty special and so easy to make. And that is taharin. This is bigoli. One of the ancient pasta tools is called the bigolaro. It is a chamber and you're able to push pasta through it and then twist it. So the bigolaro is a really, really cool tool, but not the most efficient in today's time. So we are making it with a extruded version. So this is a buckwheat dough with eggs. In Venice, you'll find this served with anchovies and caramelized onions. It's one of my favorites. You're getting some of the best of Venice with this dish. And that's bigoli. This is trophier. Now we're in Liguria, known for two very specific pastas, corzetti and trofier. Very traditionally served with basil pesto. So what we have to do with this pasta is take our egg dough and roll it into ropes. There are numerous ways to make this. You can use a metal rod, I like to use a skewer, or you can just use your hands. The translation is short and twisted, so that's the goal here. So we're gonna cut these into about two inch and then roll them out a little bit further. And then once we have our sizes that we need, we're gonna twist the edges like you were twisting like almost a, a mustache. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind. I don't know why. So I'm gonna take my skewer. There's two different ways we can do this. We can gently push and wrap the pasta around it, twist the skewer and then give it one more roll. There's also, we can wrap the pasta, almost similar to a fusilli, if you're really going for a complete twist. So both of these are acceptable versions of trophier. They're both short and twisted. That's all you need for this pasta. And that's trophier. This is Canadairely. We are now back very high in the north in Trentino Alto Adige. Looking at a leftover day-old bread, a bunch of ingredients, and we're gonna make a dish called Canadairely out of all of these things. So Canadairely is a take on a German dumpling that has been translated to more of a Italian setting. So we're gonna take some day old bread. We're gonna soak this with uh, milk. While that's soaking, we're gonna crack two eggs and gather our cheeses and parsley. Canadairely traditionally is made with speck, which is a smoked prosciutto. We are not making that right now with this one. We're gonna keep this vegetarian, a little bit more classic with a provolone, a little bit of flour, some chopped parsley, some nutmeg, and then our day-old bread is, is getting soaked up with that milk. This is served traditionally in a stock and usually served with uh, lots of greens and uh, kale or broccoli. We're gonna wait for this to kind of like really absorb. So not all pasta is made with just flour and eggs. This is a, an example of one that's really special and true to a Northern region that takes a lot of love 
from its outlying areas. So all the things that are gonna help bind this are the cheeses and the eggs. So we're gonna drop our two eggs in here, mix these up. So when we're making this canadarily, we're gonna let it sit after we make our dough, but also we're gonna drop these right into, instead of poaching them in boiling water, we're gonna drop them right into a boiling stock. Kind of like the Italian matzo ball, if you will. So we're gonna cook them. We're gonna add all of our provolone, our parsley. So once we have this mix nicely together, I'm gonna to add some flour. So now we have a beautiful, nice mixture. So we'll let that sit for a little bit, but basically we're gonna form these into beautiful balls. And then when we make them, we're gonna drop them right into boiling stock and they'll hold their shape. And that's Canadarily. This is spaghetti alla chitarra. So this is called the chitarra. It is styled after a guitar. It has two sides, one thicker, one thinner. This is traditionally from Abruzzo. They call it macaroni as well. And we're gonna essentially push the pasta through it. So I have my sheet. So we're gonna cut this so that it fits just below the wooden lines. And you can actually turn these to make it tighter or looser. We're gonna flower up our guitar to make sure it doesn't stick on any of the wires. And then just beautiful force, nice even rolls. And then it holds sauce so well. And then just the actual nature of being able to force a piece of dough through wires and then something so beautiful comes out of it. And that is spaghetti alla catara. This is maltagiati. So now we're moving on to Emilia Romagna, which is on the northern side of the central region. We're gonna make maltagiati, which means badly cut. So this is a shape that's really up to you. We just kind of cut it the way we feel. And that's all it is. It is just poorly cut pasta. <laughs> we like to cut them as like shark fins because they fold nicely into a pasta. You'll see these all throughout Italy. In every region has some poorly cut pasta. So when you're plating it, you can fold it and it acts as ribbons. And that's the maltagiati. This is fregola. And just across in the water is Sardinia. One of the things that they're known for, it's called fregola, which is what they call Sardinian couscous. So we can use a semolina dough, we can use an egg yolk dough. There's a couple different varieties. One is very coarse, rustic, that gets put through a ricer or a very fine dye when it's extruded, or more of an Israeli style couscous, which are little round balls. So what I'm doing right now is I'm rolling this out super thin. So we're gonna just take this and we're gonna cut as little as possible. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour over here so that they don't stick together. And we're gonna make little versions of couscous. This is very traditionally served in very different ways. So couscous in Sardinia, can be served with potatoes and saffron or with seafood. It can hold up to so many different things and it can belong anywhere. You can serve it with anything you want. Then I've never been disappointed with this pasta. And that's fregola. This is passatelle. So now we're switching gears a little bit and we're changing our dough. This is a traditional dough from Piemonte and it's a pasta called passatelle. We use equal parts breadcrumb and parmigiano. And when we make this dish, Traditionally, you're grating this into a chicken stock, a brodo, a beef stock. So there's actually no flour in here. It's only the breadcrumbs and cheese, nutmeg. This is more of a northern dish, very uh, warm, comforting, similar to like a tortellini and brodo, but this is a breadcrumb pasta, essentially. This is a dish that we actually use whole eggs in, whole eggs and a little bit of water. So we're gonna bring this together, and this is gonna be a really wet dough we're looking for because there is no flour in here, so we have to find a binding agent. So do you see as I formed a patty, essentially a dough, and then let's say we don't have a box grater or a food mill or a potato ricer. We're just gonna roll this out. I'm gonna use a little bit of flour on my hands, and we're gonna make um, what they like to call is like little worms. And you can see that this, if you are just dropping this right, you're gonna poach it like almost a dumpling right into a liquid. And this is a great way to use your extra bread, extra bread crumbs, and to make a really special flavorful dough. So here we are making pasta without flour. But that's what that whole egg is used for. So the egg whites in your egg that we've been taking out for all of our other pasta, 
that is your binder in here with the combination of the cheese and the breadcrumbs. So this is another alternative to pasta that people don't really know about, and that's pastatelli. This is garganelli. So next we're moving on to garganelli. Again, from Emilia Romagna. So again, I'm gonna have my ruler out and I'm gonna measure these squares a little bit bigger than the last time. I'm gonna do it two inch squares. There are specialty Garganelli boards out there, but I am more old school. I like a gnocchi board and a pencil. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water and seal these edges. And then I'm going to take my pencil and start rolling it up. There's one Garganelli. <laughs> So then again, we're just using the water to seal them together. So once they dry, they'll stick together in that very rapid boiling pasta water. Garganelli gets served with more of a lighter tomato-based sauce. Nothing too heavy because you want to showcase the intricacies. And then any kind of pasta that has a hole in it, your goal is to try to get the sauce inside of it. So when you're eating it, it, it you get layers of pasta sauce, pasta sauce. It also holds sauce so well because you have ridges on the outside and the kind of rigatoni penny hollow middle. So once these dry and then they cook, they stay just like that. And that is garganelli. This is peachy. Now we are going to be making a traditional pasta from Tuscany called peachy. It's a thick hand cut spaghetti and it has to be rolled between the palms of your hands. You can make peachy as long as short as you would like. So instead of putting it through a machine or a kitara, uh, we are sitting here and rolling each pasta in between the palms of your hand. Traditionally, it has to touch your palm for it to be considered a peachy. This is one of those pastas that you just have to accept that it is what it is. You can see that there's, there's fat and skinny and fat and skinny. Like if you are a real peachy maker in Tuscany, there's no such thing as that. It would be one continuous flow. And that's the challenging part of it in between the palms of your hands. This is one of those shapes that's really traditional and served basically because it goes well with tomatoes and wine here in wine country. And that's peachy. This is strozza pretzi. We are in central Italy making a pasta called strozza pretzi, which translates to priest strangler or priest choker. That sounds pretty evil, but in reality, the reason why they called it that was because when the priest would come to town, they would make a dish for them of these pasta, and then the priest would eat it so fast that they would almost choke on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these into two inch thin ropes, and then we're gonna use our bench scraper to flip them over. So I'm gonna take our bench scraper, I'm just gonna push them down, and then you can see that there's just a little bit of a twist and a hollowness to them. These are always handmade and really fun to make. There's a lot of like feeling of the bench scraper if it's too, the dough is too wet or too dry. But what we're doing is we're adding texture to it and layers and ridges. So again, the common theme of this is the pasta was designed to hold the sauce. Without a sauce, the pasta is nothing. They're like two peas in a pod. They need each other. The friction on the board and creating that line in the center is giving those those ridges and that texture it needs to hold the sauce. And that's strozza pretzi. This is pappardelle. We're moving on to uh, pappardelle from Tuscany. Traditionally served with a rabbit ragu, a little bit more stock-based, not very heavy tomato products. So we have our sheets of dough rolled out, and then on the sides, we're gonna cut it so that the top of the pasta is ridged and the bottom is ridged. For pappardelle, we can go as wide and small as you want, but this one, I'm gonna do about an inch and a half, and I'm gonna go straight up. You can use that ruler again if we'd like. I'm gonna trim this to a nice, perfect rectangle. Always save your scraps. And then we have our pappardelle. It's a, one of those pastas that it's, it's about the actual pasta itself. It holds sauce, it's hearty enough that it can battle something like rabbit, and it has a different nuance to it. You wouldn't want to put this with something delicate. This needs something that it can battle together for the star of the show. I don't know if you want to keep rolling, but I don't particularly like pappardelle either, but it's okay. It just smacks you around. It's like one of those pastas. And that is pappardelle. This is bucatini. 
also known as a percitelli, comes from the region of Lazio. Bugatini means erst or whole, so it's a long spaghetti with a hole running through the center of it, which captures that sauce. So this one, you might need a little bit more dough in the hopper. Once it starts coming through, we're going to guide this. Bucatini probably is about eight to 10 inches long. We wanna keep it as straight as possible. You can see the uh, hole right through it. So as it's coming out, we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, semolina to keep it from sticking to each other. You can eat this fresh or dry. A traditional drying time for a pasta that's mass produced is about 50 hours or so. So that's up to you if you have the time, or the patience or the willpower to wait that long. So this is almost at the, the length that we're looking for. And then we're just gonna get a little more semolina on there. Make sure that the uh, pasta isn't sticking together. And that's Bucatini. This is Tagliatelle. So now we're moving over to the region of La Marche, where tagliatelle and bolognese is widely served. Tagliatelle, again, is something that means to cut. Tagliatelle is a smaller version of this. It is a little bit shorter and thinner than the cousin of the pappardelle, but we are going to trim this up with a flat-sided cutter. So we can go north to south here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim them up one more time so that everything is nice and lean. The tagliatelle can also be served with uh, a cream-based sauce. Also, you'll see in truffle season, tagliatelle with white truffles and butter is a very traditional dish. It's a very simple pasta, and it holds all of the sauces so well, and it doesn't overshadow it. This one is kind of a pasta that takes the back seat to whatever goes with it. So this one is just a, a really like beautiful, elegant, soft, textured pasta that allows whatever it goes with it to shine. And that's tagliatelle. This is sedadini. Another very common shape of pasta that is extruded is penne. Penne has many other names and cousins. One is called the sedadini. So a penne traditionally is a diagonal cut. I believe in around the 16 or 1700s, someone did actually patent that cut and made the die for it. So sedadini is a flat cut version of penne. Another pasta from uh, the Campania region originated in Naples. A lot of tomato sauce there for this dish. Uh, and why they came up with it. We're gonna get rid of that first bit, and then you can actually, if you have one of these KitchenAid ones, put it right back in and keep going. So in order to keep our pasta straight, we're gonna keep guiding it down, kind of telling it what to do. We want these to be a little longer, about maybe four inches or so, and we're gonna keep guiding them. And then we're gonna... And they also call it Sedadini Regatti, which means the ridges on the outside. And that's sedadini. This is rigatoni. So what I'm starting off with is a pakari or a rigatoni from Campania. Traditionally, pakari is a smooth, hollow, rectangular shape, and the rigatoni version is with ridges. We're putting some semolina down. We're gonna place them into our extruder, and we're gonna get it going. Most dyes that are made in Italy is traditionally made in bronze which allows the pasta to give it that exterior roughness and texture or the grooves in order to hold the sauce. We want to guide the pasta straight down about two inches or so. And then once we get to that stage, we're going to cut it and lay them out. So sometimes you'll see uh, pockery is a much wider pasta and rigatoni can be smaller. They range in so many different shapes and sizes. But traditionally, pockery is smooth and rigatoni always has exterior ridges. So we're gonna keep pulling this straight down in order to assist with their shaping. And that's rigatoni. This is macaroni. I think people kind of use the term macaroni and they think immediately of mac and cheese. There is a version of macaroni that's served in Italy that is a short one to two inch hollow tube. It has many uses to it. It can be served in soups, stews, for light pastas and broths, or obviously the more well-known mac and cheese. So this one, if we keep it straighter, we'll have more of a longer, easier version of macaroni. These are curling just so slightly so they could fall into the elbow macaroni category, or we can keep them shorter and let them curl. Macaroni, I think, has a bad rap in the United States because of what it's really known for, but it's a beautiful, elegant, short, 
tubular pasta that should have its day too. And that's macaroni. This is quadrati. All right, so now we're moving farther south to Puglia, down in the heel of the boot of Italy. There are very well-known pasta shapes that come from down there, and this is not one of them. This is called quadrati, meaning a four-sided pasta. So you'll see this as many different shapes and forms. So what I'm making is more of a hollow quadrati right now. We're gonna get our ruler out again. And this one's gonna be a two and a half inch rectangle. So we're gonna cut it. Quadrati in Puglia can mean a four-sided ravioli, a small square, which is also called Franco Boli, which means stamp. But I like to kind of make this hollow freestanding quadrati. So, I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit and now I have a perfect square. I'm gonna dab a little water on all four corners and then we're gonna bring it up together. So now this is a hollow shaped quadrati and then we're gonna let that sit and dry. This is traditionally served in a broth because you don't wanna to toss this into a heavy sauce and as simple as that. It's gorgeous, it looks like a flower. And that's quadrati. This is the gagne. All right, so now we are moving over to Calabria to uh, make lagagne, the first known pasta shape in Italy. It has been translated to lasagna over the years. So lagagne is traditionally made with chickpeas down in Calabria. It doesn't look like lasagna, except it has the rigid edges as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start again and make sure these are nice and even. Lagagne is a ribbon with rigid edges. So similar to the pappardelle from the north, but this is served with chickpeas and a little bit of chilies down in Calabria. Sometimes you'll see this made out of chickpea flour as well. So these are our Lagagne ribbons. And that's Lagagne. This is Orchete. So we are still in the south of Italy. Now we're back in Puglia. And one of the most traditional pastas that come from this region is Orchete, which translates to little ears. So in order to make this one, we make a beautiful rope, nice and even, still with our egg. Traditional orchette is made with water or egg whites and flour. The region of Puglia is traditionally extremely poor and eggs are not the most uh, common down there. They kind of use more of what's in the land and what they have. So I'm gonna take my ropes and we're gonna get them into little spheres. There are numerous ways of making orchette, a way of using a butter knife, there's also the way I prefer is to take the sphere and push it into your palm and we have little ears. This is the most traditional pasta in Italy. It's always served with broccoli rabe and sausage. Sometimes you'll find it with a dried fava puree and also broccoli rabe. There's no deviating. That is, that is the dish of like the region and that's what we stick with it. This is the end all be all pasta. The shape, how it holds the stock the sauce, how the sausage just gets cradled inside these little nooks and crannies of the ears. It really is something special. And that's Orchette. This is Cavatelli. We are back in Puglia making Cavatelli. So Cavatelli is another uh, different shape similar to gnocchi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll these out into long ropes again. And then instead of making a short sphere, we're gonna make a little bit of a longer oval shaped. Once we get this into a nice oval shape, we're gonna take our gnocchi board. We're gonna push it in and then roll it and then roll it off. So again, we're gonna push this in and then flip it over. And these are uh, a style of gnocchi that's made with pasta dough. This is another kind of um, shape that holds a ragu. You'll find cavatelli to be served with kind of a to light tomato meat ragu or this one can be served with seafood as well. So these are kind of fun. They're kind of long and you just kind of flip them over. Cavatelli, you can use your normal egg yolk dough and it serves an amazing purpose. It, it holds sauce well. It has the ridges. It has an opening on the inside and it also can hold so many different things. Like this is great with a broccoli ragu or cauliflower ragu. Traditionally, this could be made with ricotta uh, and sometimes in Sicily, they use uh, saffron. So there's a lot of variations on this and I find the handmade ones, they're more rustic and, and feel a little more homemade than the uh, actual machine. And that's Cavatelli. This is Taconelli. All right, so now we're gonna move um, into the Abruzzo Molise area and is a pasta shape called taconelle. So taconelle is in the shape of a diamond. It's a very rare one. There's not that much information. There's not that many stories about this 
pasta shape, which I don't know why, because it's so easy. And it's another beautiful pasta that's served with vegetables. As we've seen, the tagliatelle and the pepperdelle and the cavatelle, all these have served with really heavy ragouts. Sometimes we need a beautiful, elegant, soft pasta to be served with the vegetables. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna take our magical ruler and I'm going to cut out our diamonds. So this one is traditionally served with more of a, a fresh chickpea. We're gonna keep going here. I'm gonna use our ruler again here and make sure I'm not making them too big. And then these little smaller squares and triangles we can use for re-roll them back in. So this dish, you'll see more of a dried pasta. You'll see a lot of this in a Brutto and Molise and more of a badly cut diamonds actually. I'll be honest with you right now. The taconelli is one of those pastas that doesn't have um, a lot of history to it. It's just something that they make. I'm not very good at it. My diamonds are pretty rough. There's a diamond in the rough big time. And that's taconelli. This is fusilli. We're still in Campania talking about fusilli. So traditional fusilli is based on the word fuso, which means like a spindle. So a traditional corkscrew, curly Q looking pasta. If we're doing a fusilli longo or fusilli corto, it just means long or short. In the United States, fusilli is also known as rotini. I don't know why, but that seems to have been the translation. So we have our semolina dough. We're gonna get it into a hopper and start slowly pressing it down. I particularly like fusilli longo. I find that it, the waves of it kind of resemble a couple other different pastas, but also holds that same sauce and, and has more surface area between those ridges or the spindles. If we wanna make it shorter or keep those corkscrew looking shapes a little bit tighter, we can control that. We can pull it down as it's coming out of the extruder or we can shorten it and hold them back a little bit. These are a more traditional fusilli, a little bit longer. So we're gonna get rid of this guys. A traditional fusilli is around four inches long. So that's where we'll keep these today. And then as you're pulling the pasta out of the extruder, you wanna get that semolina back on it again. That's fusilli. And that's how you shape every pasta. We may not have shaped every single pasta today, but we did pretty good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we did the best we could. <laughs> we could have shaped more, but that's all we have for today. <laughs> <laughs>